So our objective today, in the first day, we're going to be on this for about a week, uh, six days actually, approximately. So just over a week in a school week, right? That's five days in a school week. So in day one, our focus today is going to be readers notice how authors use poetic or descriptive language to appeal to the five senses. So we've been talking about poems and how poems use descriptions, but there's also other writings that are using descriptive forms to describe things, right? What are some things that you would describe if you're a writer and you are writing a, uh, a story of some sort, a fictional story if you want? What would be something you would describe in your story, Zoe? Yeah, so if your character is eating something, you don't want to just say, well, they ate bread. You might want to describe what the bread tasted like, right? Describe maybe did the character like the bread? Did the character like the bread? Why did the character like the bread? So you're giving descriptions, and now your reader can actually imagine in their mind what that might taste like, right? What's something else you might describe in your writing besides food? Micah? Uh, okay. So you could describe an animal in the story, okay? So you describe an animal in the story. What else can you describe in a story, London? The weather. The weather, yep. So if you want to create the setting, right, for your story, it was a dark and stormy night. Now you've got people understanding what kind of weather is going on. Maybe there's thunderstorms. It was a dark and cliche night. Yeah, we're not interrupting. Amelia? You could describe pacing. Yeah. That's probably one of the main things that a writer needs to be able to describe in their story, right? They gotta be able to describe their characters. If you can't describe your characters very well, then it's gonna be very hard for you to relate to them. It's gonna be very hard for you to, you know, listen and uh, and see and imagine who they are as a person, right, in the story. Marcos, can you take that off of your face, please? It should. I should be able to see your eyes. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, that's just some of the stuff. Anything else that people want to add before we move on? Amelia? Can I describe a place? Yes, you can describe a place, like a building, right? A desolate building, a school, if your character is going to like a prep school or a public school or something like that, a private school, they can describe what the school looks like, what the school's motto might be, their mascot. So now you got an idea of what this building looks like, right? Okay, let's move on. So we're going to read a little bit from a book called Letters from Rivka, okay? Page 14. And as we're doing this, you're going to be thinking about the words and think about descriptions, right? So let's go ahead and look through this. He might get in trouble if we don't help him. That's Avram, Avramson. I once carried a message to him at his factory. He has important friends. Come, Uncle Avram demanded. Hurry, I haven't got all day. I thought they would shoot Uncle Avram for speaking to them in that way. They certainly would have shot Papa. But Uncle Avram's demand seemed to make up their minds to go with him. I knew your family had influence, Toba, but I never realized how much. The guards left me by the train and headed across the clearing toward your father and his factory. I prayed Uncle Avram had made the robbery look real so they would not suspect him. Pizza. Okay, so just a little bit of background. Letters from Ripka is written in letter format from a character named Ripka. And so in this one, he's writing a letter to somebody, going, talking, describing a situation that is happening. Okay? Uh, Ripka, I believe this. Rivka is supposed to be a Jew, and it's supposed to be kind of more toward the setting of the 40s, 1940s in that era. So there's a lot of like persecution going on and that sort of thing. So he's, he's writing of what some of his experiences were, okay? So let's go ahead and look at some questions. Well, actually, we need to continue some more pages first before we get to the questions. My question. The train whistle blew once, twice as the rough-bearded guard and Uncle Avram disappeared up the road. The thin guard turned back toward me. 
looking for a moment as if he might change his mind and return to finish the inspection. Then he, too, vanished into the woods. The train, straining on the tracks, moved a little backward before it started rolling forward, slowly, out of Berg 2. Berg is good. We'll go with that. You know what a good runner I am. I have learned to run to keep out of Saul's reach. Outrunning the train was easy. I heaved my rucksack from the ground, tossing it into the box car. Stones skipped out from under my boots as I scrambled alongside. Jumping on board and sprawling on my belly, pulled myself in. Quickly, I tucked into the shadows of the car so no one could see me. The freight car smelled warm and rich like cattle, and I thought of Bug, Bube, Ruth, Sweet Cow, Fruitle. I write this letter to you with my good school pencil in the blank pages at the front of your suitcase. I am writing very neat and tiny so as not to spoil the book. I hope you do not mind that I am writing in your book, Tova, but I have no other paper. I know this letter can never reach you, but in writing to you, I feel less frightened. You have been a big sister and a best friend to me. I cannot bear to think of never talking to you again. So I will talk to you by writing about my journey. <laughs> we are heading. Wait. Right, Rick says it's boy, I believe. We are heading for the Polish border. That is all I know. I cannot even speak the language. What will it be like in Poland and beyond that, in America, where at least I will meet my three oldest brothers? I can hardly believe that I too will soon live in such a place in America. Shalom, my little house. Shalom, my family, Shalom Sturdichev, and my dear little grandmother, Bube Ruth. Shalom Hannah and Aunt Anna and Uncle Avram, but most of all, Tova. Shalom to you, Rivka. There's a misspelling in there. It's a misspelling, but it's a typo. It's a typo. You'll be fine. We will survive. Okay. So let's look at some questions here. What do you notice about the words the author chose to use on these pages? Think about your five senses, sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. What senses do you think the writer is appealing to you on these pages? So what's something that was used to activate your five senses while going through this short excerpt? Micah? There you go. So the freight train, right? We have, they describe the smell, so now we have an image in our mind of what it might smell like on this this freight train. Zoe? Yep, so there's description of the sound. <laughs> Wesley? You can detect the warm um, sound of the truck. Okay, so we have some touch going on there. Marco? Well, if you, well this is not really about the but it's about something that's kind of important, obviously. Well, let's focus on the senses of the story, um, okay? He felt, he felt his uncle, Avram, did something away by the guy who was away. Okay, so maybe that we can get some imagery from that. Uh, what about the thin and the big guards, right? Yeah. So we have an idea of that there's two guards, and they're not the same size, right? We also described one of the guards having a beard, right? So now we can just we can imagine some imagery there as well for our sight to see. Okay, so as you read today, look for examples of descriptive or poetic language that appeals to the senses. And then what you're gonna do is as you're reading your your book, you're going to get a sticky note, which I have some over here. One sticky note, please. Not 15 sticky notes. One sticky note. And you're going to write down an example of, of a descriptive language from your, your book, okay? Remember, descriptive language is activating one of those five senses. It could be your sight, it could be your smelling, it could be your feeling, like touch, that sort of thing. Let's, let me go back there so you can see real quick. Hearing, sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch. So those are 
behind you. Okay, so you're going to be looking for that. It shouldn't be very hard. Every writer uses descriptive language and activates one of those senses at some point in their writing. In fact, they do it throughout the entire piece of their writing, okay? Because that's the only way you're going to be able to really follow along, right? They have to describe the setting. They have to describe the characters you run into. They have to describe the sounds. So they're doing a lot of description, all right? So it shouldn't be that hard to find at least one thing to write on a sticky note and put on the board. Zoe? From the guided reading? Yes, you may. Any text that you have, so any text that you read today, be thinking about that, all right? Okay, go ahead and get your reading materials, and you're gonna accomplish these tasks today. And when you're done with all your tasks, then you can go through um, epic, okay? Don't be trying to rush through that. 